Hello everybody and welcome to part two of three of our tutorial series on how to get into the wedding business. Part one focused on getting your foot in the door and brought up some different tools in which to do so. If you haven't already purchased our wedding starter kit, I've placed the link in the description of this video and there's a new item in it which I will talk about first in this tutorial. So you've booked a wedding. What's the first thing to do? Sometimes you'll find that certain brides or grooms are a lot of talk. They'll want to go with you and there will be an ongoing conversation and then, you know, maybe they find a different videographer or they end up deciding that your price is not right for them. There are many different factors that go into this and um, a way that you can sort of make everything official is just by working out a contract. We have our own contracts. It's just a... Uh, Microsoft Word file, I believe, and uh, ours is included in this pack, and you can just go in and uh, edit all the necessary stuff, but we generally work with a, uh, a half down down payment, and that is so that you hold the date, and also that you know they're good for their payment. So it's not just for you, the videographer, it's for them too. It's just kind of insurance. And in the contract, you also include things like how many hours you're gonna be there, how many videographers, what they're getting as far as the final product is concerned, three DVDs, five DVDs, you know, custom sleeves, custom labels, you include all of that stuff. And then you send that file to them and you have them sign it and then return it to you with the check. So you have a signed contract from them saying that they agreed all this and that the second payment is due at the end of the event. And our contract, like I said, is now available in the wedding starter kit. Okay, so you've got your down payment. As far as necessary equipment goes, um, I wouldn't go as far as to say two cameras is necessary, but it's as close as you can get. You can do... A wedding video with one camera you know just one steady camera on the bride and groom straight on looking down the aisle uh, very possible um, another good thing that I used to do um, now we run three T2I's two cameras is almost necessary and a good second camera that I've used many times is a GoPro um, it's a nice cutaway camera. If you have a medium shot of the bride, the groom, and the officiant, you can place the GoPro camera in a nice location at a 45 degree angle or hide it up in the raft or somewhere. You can get really creative with where you put that GoPro. And it's a nice shot because if you get it wide enough, you can use it to cut away at almost any point in the ceremony. So it doesn't have to be synced up with audio or anything like that. So as far as audio goes, there's a couple different routes. The easiest is wireless mics, obviously. If you have two, so the groom usually gets one, and then the officiant, and that usually picks up whatever the bride is saying. So two wireless microphone kit uh, is nice, and they're not too expensive. If you don't have that, a boom mic works, and I've done weddings like this. What I usually do, instead of asking the DJ for a line out from his feed, it seems like DJs don't like that. It seems like it sort of rubs them the wrong way. So... I just place a boom mic right next to the speaker and it picks up whatever live audio is going on at the event. So if the officiant is usually mic'd and that's coming through speakers, you just place a boom mic, you know, close to it and check the levels and then just record audio the entire time and sync it up later. So that's an option if, uh, if you don't have wireless mics. As far as a wedding goes, the ceremony is the most difficult and yet the most important part. So we usually show up a half an hour before we're supposed to just to set up. And that usually, I feel rushed. So I would say 45, if it's one of your first weddings, show up an hour early, who cares? You can get some B-roll that might end up coming useful later. Uh, just get some intro shots. And that's usually how we start out the wedding is we'll get intro shots. It'll be the crowd filling in, it'll be a time lapse, it'll be close-ups of decorations and whatnot. And then, you know, we'll take a break and we'll start getting set up for the ceremony. So that'll be placing the cameras. And like I said, if you, it depends on how many cameras you have. If you only have one, the necessary angle is the setter dead on where you can see equal parts of the bride and groom. If you have two, uh, I like to go center and then roam with the other one. So that would mean you have the center, but then with the second camera, you get a couple crowd shots. 
you focus on the bride and groom for the most important parts. It's really hectic, you know, with the cannons, with the DSLRs, you have to stop every 12 minutes or so. So we just choreograph it every seven or eight just to be safe. It's as simple as making sure to look over at the other person and they give a thumbs down like they're going to stop recording and they stop recording. And then you make sure that the other two people are rolling and then they start recording right away and they give a thumbs up, and then the next person looks at the other videographer, gives them the thumb down, they go, you know, and this is just our way of doing it, you'll come up with your own. It's really hectic to be that floating camera person because you'll be focused on getting a crowd shot, and all of a sudden you'll hear them saying their vows. And so, you know, you want to be on your toes if you decide to go that route um, and make sure, you know, you get a couple alternate angles and then really make sure you choreograph with that steady camera in the back to let them uh, pause because if you if you somehow forget about that and the camera stops recording and you the roamer are moving around then you you don't have any shot rolling and of course you'd fill that with b-roll but you don't want to put yourself in that situation so either way i like the gopro i like the gopro just even if as a fourth camera as a cutaway with dslrs you're always worried about batteries so I think it's key to find an outlet before you start and get get the charger plugged and hopefully a couple extra batteries ready to go. Another almost essential piece of gear is a big 32 gigabyte card and a battery grip. Even if it's an off-brand battery grip, they work really well and then that way you have that much more battery life and you don't need to change your card. If you don't have a ton of memory cards bring along a laptop and dump off footage as you go so after the ceremony go to your laptop dump off the footage so once the ceremony wraps generally what happens is the bride and groom take pictures during that time when they take pictures i have found that it's not out of the ordinary to ask to set aside some time for you the videographer and the reasoning behind that is they're paying you probably as much or close to what they're paying their photographer so as a videographer it's your right to have some time alone with them to construct some shots and early on when I did weddings it wasn't that much fun artistically because you were always scrambling and it felt like you were doing some live crazy news event you were always a step behind and it was crazy and you never had time to get too creative either ask them before or just ask them the day of and I usually go up to the photographer first and ask them, hey, do you mind if I if I set up a few shots or if I borrow them? And, you know, depending on the photographer, everyone I've asked has been really nice. And the bride and grooms always seem like it's a really great idea. And that's always a good time to grab some shots for your wedding reel. Not just for their wedding DVD. I mean, you know, cinematic shots will look great on their wedding DVD. But that's when you can really plan out some really cinematic slider shots or some glide cams and you can really get some cool poses and stuff. And asking them the day of is totally fine. Just keep that in mind that having some of those epic shots will come in handy for your trailers and for your wedding promos and, uh, you know, like DVD menus for them. And I, I think with the DSLRs, they're capable of capturing such cinematic images that if you can get some time to set up some shots, it'll really show what you can do artistically, and that will start to set you apart in the competition. I personally don't have the computing power to color correct long files that would happen in like the ceremony or in speeches or something like that. So I will actually switch between something not quite standard, but I'll switch back and forth between something like faithful with maybe like one more contrast, and cine style. So for instance, shots that you know you don't mind taking a little bit of time on and color correcting, I'll shoot in cine style. And that would be like the shots, if you get the bride and groom to come out and spend some time with you, switch over to cine style, and then you can go back and really uh, add some cinematic color correction to that and add that to your reel. And then, you know, for their wedding DVD, so it's not too out of place, just try to color correct it like the rest of the standard or the faithful uh, video. Because editing a uh, wedding is such a, a big obstacle in itself that taking out the chore of color correction lightens the load immensely. With speeches, since there's so many people 
that usually have the microphone. You know, it could go from the best man to the maid of honor to the father to the brother, whatever. I've had weddings where literally they had everybody in the wedding party make a speech. So instead of trying to do wireless mics and saying, oh, okay, I'll just put one on the best man and then the maid of honor, and then you get to it and more people go and you don't have any audio, I would suggest just doing the shotgun up to the speaker idea. The people giving the speeches pass around a microphone. And so that way you capture whatever's going on. So once you get to the dances, um, that might be a good time to break out your glide cam. I'd only do it if you have another camera rolling. And slow-mo here is very good. It's hard to film the entirety of the dance with enough angles to make it cinematic and make it cool. But if you have slow-mo, you can slow it down because you don't have that much footage. As far as the songs are concerned that are played during these times for the dances and uh, for stuff like that, I will generally go to the DJ and ask if he has a copy of the CD because they generally do. If you don't want to worry about talking to the DJ, sometimes the bride will have a CD already made uh, as like wedding favors or something like that. So that's about all I can think of. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I covered everything and you know there's always something that will pop up in every wedding that will catch you off guard but you know the more you do and the more tips you gain uh, it'll feel a little more repetitive and you'll feel more comfortable doing it. And once you get to being more comfortable, that's when you can really start to like take chances and start to do some really cool stuff. So, you know, that's kind of where I'm at now is I, I know what I'm getting into when I do a wedding. You know, it, it's not getting boring, but once it gets to that point, it's like, oh, I want to, I want to, you know, take a few more chances and spice this up. And so the next tutorial is going to be about uh, editing and post-production and final delivery. And um, it will uh, heavily involve the wedding starter kit. So again, if you haven't bought that, go ahead and head over to our website, newmanfilms.com and uh, get the wedding starter kit. And I hope you come back for the third and final wedding tutorial. Thanks for watching.